Welcome to Five After Midnight, True Stories of the Paranormal. Number one. Yesterday I was walking through Loblaws. I was just leaving the cereal aisle when a cart filled with groceries cut in front of me. I waited for whoever was pushing the cart to move, but after about 45 seconds, they hadn't budged. I peered around the corner of the aisle to tell the shopper that they had cut me off, but there was nobody there. I pushed the cart away and everything went dead silent. I walked around the store a bit more and to my horror, everybody was gone. There were unattended carts scattered around the store and there were no lines at the checkout and no clerks either. It lasted only about five minutes, but it felt like it was a lot longer than that. And then everything returned to normal and all the people came back. Number two. I had a new mobile phone, less than 24 hours old. I hadn't even given the number to anybody yet. I had only made two phone calls, around 30 seconds apart from each other. The following evening, I attended a meeting to discuss the planning of an event that I was involved in. As I was about to leave at the end of the meeting, the chairwoman said to me, Oh, by the way, I'm sorry I didn't return any of your phone calls. I was puzzled and asked what she meant. She said she'd received a couple of messages on her voicemail that were my voice fading in and out and sounding as though there was wind howling in the background. I was saying something like, I'm sorry, I can't get through, please... I explained that it wasn't me. It couldn't have been me. She was quite adamant that it was my voice, so I checked her phone and wrote down the number from which the call had come. She held up the pad, and it was my new number. I was pretty freaked out. After leaving the meeting, I called my phone company and got them to check my account. They had a record of three phone calls. The two calls uh, were the ones that I was aware that I made, and then there was another call in between. I can absolutely say that I didn't make that call, and had I, there wouldn't have been time for me to leave that message, let alone two. To this day, this creeps me out. Back when I was in high school, me and a couple of my friends had just gotten back to my house from a party and it was very late, around 2 a.m. As we were about to go to sleep, I decided to take a quick shower because I had a lot of beer spilled all over my shirt by a drunk girl and I also smelled like a pile of cigarette butts. I'm not the kind of guy to just hop in bed after a night of filthy debauchery, even if I am drunk. So as my buddies turned on Family Guy to watch as they fell asleep, I hopped into the shower. Normal shower cleaning commenced as planned, and because my friends are the kind of people that watch television obnoxiously loud, and the bathroom and shower being very close to the television, I could kind of hear the episode of Family Guy from inside the shower. So, after taking what seemed like a 15-minute shower, with what sounded like the same episode of Family Guy slightly playing in the background, I hopped out and dried off. Upon exiting the windowless bathroom, I looked out into the room and realized that it was now daytime. The clock read 10 a.m. Somehow, I had just gone eight hours in the shower. What doesn't add up is that the water never got cold, and I never heard the Family Guy episode end, and, most importantly, I know for a fact that I was only in that shower for 10 to 15 minutes tops. To this day, nobody believes me, and we affectionately refer to the event as Shower Time Machine. Number 4 
I was in my friend's basement with another friend, watching her play a game on her computer. We were all huddled around it in office chairs, when suddenly something dropped from the ceiling onto friend number three's shoulder. It was a frog. I happened to be afraid of frogs. I screamed and my friend spun around, causing the frog to jump and land on the ground. While we tried to figure out where this mystery frog came from, we decided to go grab something to trap it with. We all left the computer room, and as soon as we did, we heard a bang. When we went back, and one of the large ceiling tiles had fallen. The one over her dad's work desk. We walked over to it, and we saw it was unexplainable. The tile had somehow defied the laws of nature because it had fallen through objects on the table, as in it was as if the tile fell clean through the phone, papers, pens, etc., remained unmoved in the exact spots, resting on top of it. It was way creepy, and we all just freaked out. Number five. When I was about 15 years old, I went over to my cousin's house to play some video games. I had just got Super Mario Sunshine and had been playing it a lot. So I decided to bring my GameCube over with a few games just in case he wanted to play something else. So I hook everything up and start the game. We play for a few hours, but then I remember I took the disc out the night before. So I go to my bag and check the Mario Sunshine case. Sure enough, the disc is in there. However, the GameCube is still playing the game perfectly. So I open the disc tray, and as soon as I do, the screen glitches and the most terrifying loud screeching and beeping sound starts coming from the speakers. I freak out and immediately unplug the GameCube. I try turning it on again, but this time it actually says to insert disc. My cousin and I were trying to explain what happened to each other, saying the GameCube must have just glitched or something. But the creepiest thing when, was when I was getting ready to leave, my little cousin comes home from preschool, walks up to me and said, Mario told me. He said he doesn't like it when you take him out. And then she just walked away and wouldn't talk about it anymore. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the show. If you have a story to share, send us an email, like us on Facebook, share, like, and subscribe.